So let's get into this. Um, <clears throat> tonight I'm going to talk about how to cultivate the seed. What did God give you in your heart that it was a word given to you, and how do you cultivate that? What does that look like? Um, I think a lot of the times, um, I'll say this line early. <clears throat> you, you don't have to water things that you, 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 don't, you don't water things that you bury. You water things that you plant. Does that make sense? You water things that you plant. You don't water things that you bury. And if you guys know, we're going to be talking about a lot of things, different things like what faith looks like. And last week uh, or last Sunday, Pastor talked about the parable of the sower a little bit. And we talked about different things. But tonight we're going to be talking about how to cultivate the seed. And so we're going to get into Luke 13, 6 through 9. It says, he began telling this parable. A man had a fig tree which had been planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it and didn't find any. And he said to the vineyard keeper, he said, Behold, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree without finding any. Cut it down, he said. Why does it even use up the ground? Matter of fact, other translations say, why does it sterilize the ground? It's good for nothing, basically, is what he's saying. He answered and said unto him, Let it alone, sir, for this year too, until I dig around it and put fertilizer on it. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. But if not, cut it down. There's a lot in this. There's a lot in this that even that man had to tell his boss, saying, give me a year. Let me dig this thing up. Let me fertilize this thing. And if it bears fruit, amen. And if it don't, okay, cut it down. But what have we done with the seed that we've been given or a word that we've been given or a ministry or something like that? What have we been given and how do we cultivate that seed? <clears throat> There's a lot of scenarios in this and here's one of them. The master comes to see the fig tree after three years and it hasn't produced any fruit. Now, coincidentally, if you guys read Leviticus 19, you couldn't eat the fruit of a tree for the first three years. It was actually considered uncircumcised so that the fourth year you dedicated the first fruits of that tree to the Lord. You know what I love about that? Christ kept the whole law. I mean, that's just so amazing how Christ kept the law. He was so perfect that he would even keep little things like a tree, a tree. He didn't let anything fall to the ground. And so in that parable, he's saying, look, three years, nothing's happening. What's going on? Right? And how many of us sometimes feel like that? Lord, I've been kind of barren lately, or, or maybe I haven't seen fruit in my kids. Or You guys know what I'm saying? What, what, why haven't I seen the fruit cultivated? Or is this your season yet to bear fruit? Let's continue, right? And I'm just going to go through, again, a couple scenarios and some things we can take action on. Because remember, he said time first, and then he had action items. So um, number one is you, you, you have to do more than just receive the word. You have to understand it. It's easy to receive a word from someone, especially like a good word, you know, like uh, a prophecy or whatever. Uh, someone will come to you and give you a bomb prophetic word, and it's like, man, that was awesome, and it's confirmation. But what happens if you don't do anything to act upon that word? The book of James actually talks about that. It actually says that a man that looks himself in, 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 in a mirror, he forgets what he once looked like, and he departs. So faith without works is dead. We talked about that before. So you don't want to take the word on and say, man, that was a good word. Thank you. And put it on the shelf. No, Lord, what are you telling me in the season? Why are you giving me that word right now? Why is that a confirmation to me? And so you got to do more than just receive the word. You have to understand it. So it's time to dig and plant. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and like I said before, I heard a preacher one time say, you don't have to water something that's been buried. You have to water something that's been planted. In other words, there's a purpose that you were given that seed. Whenever you bury seed, it has to multiply. That's what you're, that's what you're planting it for, amen? amen? No farmer that I know of goes out and scatters seed and says, man, I hope something happens. He's doing it for a reason. He's got to either feed his family or the nation or, you know, something like that. Or cattle, for example. No man buys a hundred head of cattle and says, yeah, they're nice. You got to multiply that thing, right? Make some money on it. That's what you want to do. And so <clears throat> if you think about it, Burial means death. Planting means multiplication. Planting means multiplication. Guys, listen to me. When that line came up in the parable of the sower, where he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant, he wasn't talking about him just selling his goods. He talked about he was faithful because he multiplied himself. He did something in his walk that the other one didn't do, the last one didn't do. He multiplied himself. So burial means death. Planting means multiplication, which means there was a purpose that the, that the seed was received. All seeds get cultivated in the dark. You 
You know, sometimes you got to cultivate your seed on your own by yourself with God. Sometimes I think we go to our friends and stuff to try to get answers that God's trying to tell you. But guys, man will tell you something through their filter. Man will pervert how you're supposed to cultivate the seed. When you go to the Lord, he'll teach you how to plant and cultivate and water and fertilize and dig. And guys, guess what? You have to use different tools in different seasons of that seed. You use a different tool to sow a seed. You use a different tool to fertilize that seed. You use a different tool to reap the fruit of that seed. Amen? Amen. Maybe you're in a season of changing your tools. It's time to change some tools, folks. Maybe you're called in this season to dig that stuff back up. Maybe it's a season for you to go to inner healing. Get rid of those stones that are in the way that's choking up your seed. Amen? Amen? Maybe we're in a season of, hey, I gotta reap now, but you didn't know if this was the season to do it. Folks, there's never a perfect time than right now because the seeds are white for the harvest. It's time to cultivate, man. Or maybe you're called to fertilize right now. Maybe God's telling you to shut your mouth and go in your room and get fertilized with God and the word. That's not bad. That's awesome. Amen. If you look at the parable of the talents, the Bible says in Matthew 25, 14, that the master entrusted his servants with different amounts of talents. Listen to that. He entrusted his servants. You know what that means? He gave them a plan. He said, you will take five. You will take two. You will take one. I'm trusting you with this. Do something with it. In other words, they all had the same plan. Multiply it. They entreat, the, 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 the master is saying, I'm trusting you, do something with it, right? And so when we look at that, he says, with, uh, two of them understood that the master would come back. And in verse 19, it says this, the master came back after a long time to settle their accounts. Doesn't that sound familiar? Like, we're going to have to give an account for things we do. The talents we've been given, the gifts we've been given, the time that we spent with one another. Did you do everything I told you to do, son? Thank God for the blood of Jesus and grace, man. Seriously. But there is a season of cultivation. There's a season that we're going to give an account for something. Amen? This means that they knew their mission, and each one was entrusted with a specific mission to multiply what was given. Uh, Two of them planted, and with much diligence, cultivation, and prayer, they multiplied themselves. But one of them buried the talent. Remember, guys, you don't have to water something you bury. And you know what happened with the guy that buried his talent? He did the same thing Adam did. He blamed God. He blamed the master. I thought you were a hard man to deal with. When it was him that was entrusted with the seed. And I wonder, and I used to do this a lot. But like, Lord, you gave me the talent, but I haven't seen the doors open up. And then you know what he would say to me? Did you pray for those doors? Did you ask me if this was the right field to plant in? Oh my gosh, guys, I've scattered tons of seeds everywhere. I don't even know. But again, what kind of farmer would I be if I'm not a steward of the seeds he's given me? You have to steward the seed that he's given you. He's got to steward the talents that he's given you. And he gave them to you for a reason. Okay? You don't just receive a word. You have to understand and grow it. And the second part of this is fertilize it. In the King James, it says they put dung on it. They dung it. You know, dung has two major ingredients in it, nitrogen and phosphorus. And sometimes, did you guys know that a fig tree can actually still grow and produce leaves and no fruit? It'll still continue to grow. It looks like a fig tree. Looks very nice, actually. But you know why it doesn't grow fruit? Because it either has too much phosphorus or too much nitrogen. Word, spirit. Have too much word. You're going to be missing what the Spirit's doing. Too much Spirit, you won't be grounded in the Word. Does this make sense? So, And you still will be a Christian. You can still be a Christian. You'll still show the fruits that you're growing in something. You still have the knowledge that you've always had. And God is increasing your knowledge. But guys, knowledge without the Spirit is just a dead letter. It's dead to you. And guess what? This is why he was saying, don't just, don't just take the seed and run with it cultivate it, fertilize it. Make sure you dig around it and fertilize it. It says this, that notice the scripture says, when we first began, the the young man had told his master, 
Can you just give me a year with it? Listen to that. First thing he said was, don't kill it. Give me a year. What if he's calling some of you to just take this time to seek him and stop what you're doing? Look at that. Give me a year, a whole year with the plan. The master was fed up with the plan. How many of you guys have situations in your life, maybe kids, maybe family members, maybe businesses, maybe ministries where you're like, why isn't it working? What if you need to step back and just for a time, you have to seek the Lord on the plan on how to dig around it and fertilize it. What if this is your time to really cultivate? And guys, sometimes we fertilize it with what we think it needs to be fertilized with. And God's saying something completely different. Completely different. Sometimes I think my kids, you know, need a good whooping. What if they just need me to listen to them? What if God's telling me just stop and listen, just to listen to them? Why not? What if my time right now is to make sure that I'm interceding over my children? Or your family? Or what God's calling you into next? What has he promised you in the season that he says, I'm going to fulfill? What did he promise you three, four, five, ten years ago that hasn't happened yet? Maybe you put it back down for a season. You're saying, okay, what now? Get in the room, man. Ask the Lord to cultivate it. Let him give you that year that you need to cultivate that seed. Amen? Let's continue. Whew, this is going to be a quick sermon. It is. I only have two pages. It's amazing. I was like, man, don't make this a half hour, Lord. This is a lot. I was up pretty late last night. (laughs) The effectual fervent prayers of righteous men avail much. Keep praying, saints. It ain't over, man. It ain't over. Didn't he promise us territory? Come on. If he did it before, he can do it again, folks. I'm telling you. Okay? Sorry. Back to this. So like I said before, fun fact. Did you guys know a fig tree can still grow into a tree but not yield fruit? If it's under-fertilized, it won't yield fruit. If it's over-fertilized, it won't yield fruit. Learn to find the secret place and spend time with God and asking him to prune you. We hate that word. Right? It hurts when he prunes, when he takes things away that we depend on. Sometimes we have a crutch. Sometimes maybe you guys have a tree and you're still depending on that post that you tied on to make it straight up. You're still depending on that post. It's time to take off the post, folks, and grow. Oh, this ministers to me. Because there's still so many things in my heart that he's promised me. It's like, Lord, it's time to move. But how do you want me to do it now? Guys, Cursed is the man that trusts in the arm of the flesh. Blessed is the man that hears the Spirit of God. I don't want to trust in myself anymore because, dude, I did that for a long time. And, it, and it, it, he'll, he'll make that stuff crumble. And he's faithful to. He's faithful to. I was just talking to someone earlier. He's like, man, he humbled me through something. And I had to take stuff down and all this other stuff. It's like, but isn't he faithful, though, to make you do that so you wouldn't get caught up in the flesh? Isn't that cool? God's still faithful. He's still a father. Sometimes I take things away from my kids, not because I'm a bad dad, because I love them and I don't want to spoil their soul. If I keep spoiling their soul, the Bible says I hate them and I don't want to hate them. You know, we all have a responsibility for ourselves. What seed is in you that God has put in you that you don't want to hate the blessing he gave you by neglecting it? Oh, this is going to be good. This is the last point here. Bear fruit in its season. You got to bear fruit in your season. Because there's a time between the inception, the sprouting, and the production of the fruit. Okay? You know what chaps my hide sometimes? You know what just chaps my britches? (laughs) Doggone it! When people say they know what they're talking about, but there's no anointing to back it up. When they look like a tree, they sound like a tree, they have all the tree leaves but there's no fruit to eat from because you've never been through it with the Lord. I don't like that because you're not counterfeiting God. You're counterfeiting yourself. And maybe your victory is as small as your testimony, but that's your victory. Speak from that. People will eat more from that fruit than the fruit that you tried to produce. 
Don't produce too early. Here's what I mean by that. The inception is the seed, and it's planted in the ground and it gets fertilized and watered. The sprout enters the environment to produce. So once you plant your seed, it takes a little time, right? Now, have you guys ever seen those time lapses on like Instagram or whatever, Facebook? See those little time lapses? And you know, you plant a tree or a little seed, and three days later, a little sprout comes up, a little leaf, and you're like, oh. What's that going to be, you know? So the sprout comes up, but would I be able to say from that sprout, man, let me eat that apple. It's a sprout. But yet we do that sometimes with the Lord. Cultivate your seed because now you've just entered into the elements to start producing fruit. You've not been tested, tried, weathered. You haven't felt the storms. You haven't been shaken like we need to be sometimes to make sure that we're proven in the fire. Right? And those trials hurt sometimes, right? But God is faithful to fertilize you so that when the storms come, you'll be able to withstand them. He's faithful to plant you in someplace big so that when the storms come, you're not going to bend, bow, or break. But when you don't break and bow, when you go through the storm, that tree stands taller than ever. And there's more fruit from that tree. Do you guys know that when lightning strikes the ground, it refertilizes the ground? I didn't know that. That's awesome. God knew what he was doing. You know, it's scary, right? When you go through like lightning storms or things like that. And it's like, but man, isn't that cool? When you see the strikes of field, it re it revitalizes the soil. God knew what he was doing. You got to trust him with the lightning sometimes. We have to trust him with the digging sometimes. And the digging hurts, but the digging is the best thing for you. Sometimes you're in a good season right now where you're like, Lord, I just need you to fertilize me right now. Teach me the word. Teach me the spirit. I don't understand everything that's going on here sometimes. I don't understand why there's healings and miracles and signs and wonders. Maybe I'm not really used to that. Maybe I am used to that and we're not going fast enough. He's saying, no, it's in his time, not yours. So you need to be fertilized and cultivated. Some of you have already been fertilized and cultivated. You need watering. That's good too. And you'll sprout that seed when you're like, Lord, teach me how to water myself. What does that look like? I've spent seasons and seasons in the word and I have no clue why. But he taught me how to water myself, how to cultivate my seed. What am I doing? What does this look like, Lord? And every single time I was cultivated and watered, he brought me through another trial. For what? So that I can produce fruit for people to eat from. I wasn't a fake tree and I don't want to. Guys, do you want to be a fake tree? I don't, you know, I love Christmas. My favorite time of the year is Christmas. I grew up in Minnesota. It's very cold. It should be a crime how cold it is up there, but it's cold, right? But what I loved about it is it was so pure and clean. Nobody liked fake Christmas trees. Down here in Florida, all you see is fake Christmas trees. They're still pretty. They still light up your house. You still put ornaments and bulbs around it, but it's still fake. You hear me? Still fake. The cool thing is you get to reuse it. But there's nothing like the real smell of a pine. It's not the real fruit of an apple tree. It's nothing like the real testimony of a person that's been through it. Because, man, it brings you through. You know, one thing about Moses, he was spoken against a lot. But, man, he could testify of the wondrous works of God. And people listened. And he raised up leaders after him to listen as well. And they had their own testimonies. And it was good. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the service to build up the body of Christ until we attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man. Listen to that. To a mature man. We're building up people to be mature people. Okay? We're not building them up just so we can throw them into ministry. That was the worst decision I ever made was getting into ministry too quick. Oh, it, 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 it didn't work well. But thank God I went through it. I mean, he works all things together for the good. It's, it's true. But now understanding this side of it, it's like, God, I see why you want me to wait and have process. I need the process sometimes. I need the digging. I need the cultivating. I need the watering. Amen? Amen. This is one of my last points. It says this. Remember the story of the fig tree that was cursed? Isn't that kind of outside of Jesus' character? Kind of like flipping tables. He's like, you know, 
blessing people, woman at the well. He's like, no, you had five husbands, but I want to save you anyway, right? Uh, Mary, I wasn't pointing at anybody specific, but, uh, but like Mary, you know, she, 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 she's a prostitute and he saves her and says, go and sin no more, right? And he was, you know, trying to instruct the disciples and healing demoniacs and stuff like that. And then he goes and curses a fig tree. That's kind of, it was like weird when I read that story sometimes, but I kind of got some light on it. It says this in Mark eleven twelve. 12, on the next day when he had left Bethany, he became hungry. Seeing at a distance a fig tree in leaf, which means that the fig tree had produced its leaves, it looked like a fig tree, he went to see if perhaps he would find anything on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not yet the season for figs. Don't bloom too fast. Don't bloom too fast. Be patient. Some of you, we know, like, trust me on this, guys. I don't think there's a day that goes by that Pastor Todd or Pastor Jan, myself, we talk about all of you in ministry, and we're like, we're so glad you guys are here. We can see things happening with you guys, and, you know, where we want to plug people in and stuff like that. Be patient. You ain't got to jump ahead of the game. God sees you. God knows your giftings and talents better than we do. Guys, can I be blunt? Sometimes I have, like, visions about it, some of you people in the room. It's like, they would be cool for that, but just give them a little time. Give them a little time so that they're prepped. Some of you mothers, you're like, man, I just feel like I'm supposed to do something for the Lord. Yeah, but you got kids. And we don't want to pull you away from your children. Give it time. Be patient. I'm just using examples here, right? Some of you are like, man, I just feel like, man, I got this boldness and I want to go preach for God and all these other things. Yes, but have you spent time in the word to know what to preach to those people? Be patient. Cultivate yourself in the season because guys, what we're walking into is going to be big, big. And we're going to need you. And now's this time where we can just sit back and say, Lord, would you just give me that extra time? Would you dig me up, Lord? Would you prune me? Would you fertilize me? Would you water me, please? So that I can bear fruit for your glory, not mine. Huh? Why not, huh? Why not? We all need that. If you're waiting, count it a blessing that he's causing you to wait. Count it a blessing that he's calling you to cultivate and to grow and produce your faith in due season. Count it a blessing. Count it a blessing. There's nothing wrong with that. You still heard it, right? And guys, some of you are sprouting up quick now. Amen. It's just seasons. Don't worry about it. He's got you. He's got you. Guys, I'll just say it. This election, he's got it. Amen. Amen. What, what, do I, what do I have to fear? What is man, Lord, that thou art mindful of? Seriously? I serve the king that spoke this stuff into existence. He can change anything in a second. Yo, he turned Pharaoh's heart ten times. You think he can't change this? But I'm patient with him because I know he's doing something. Guys, what if he's going to build everybody's faith? Can I be really blunt? What if he's causing us to put our trust not in man, but in him? Why not? Man ain't going to save you from the problems. Jesus Christ will. What if that's what's happening? I'm so excited because I know he's going to get his way. He always gets his way. Guys, guess what? Whatever happens, but I'm not believing for the whatever. I'm believing for what I know to to believe is right. We still got to go save souls. He's going to get up every Sunday morning and preach. Pastor Jan's going to continue to do her Bible studies. Brittany's going to get up and be the Brit far that she always is and sing songs. Mariah's going to continue to produce graphics. Pete's going to get up here and talk us into worship. We're going to be preaching. We're going to be doing. God's on the throne. He ain't stopped yet. And I love that about my God. So when you're talking about seed right now, ask the Lord what he wants you to do with the seed he's given you. Because maybe you're the catalyst to change what's going on in the nation right now. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Stand up, everybody. Thank you for joining us today at Revive Us Now at our YouTube channel. Remember to click that subscribe button to Revive Church and share this video with a friend. And if you'd like to support this ministry, go to reviveusnow.com forward slash give.